Another beautiful Virginia summer day. Working on the pond, we have a modification to fix the bubble issue. And if you own a pond in grounds, you probably know what we're talking about. You could have installed it to avoid this problem, which is when the water level of the pond is at a lesser height than the ground surrounding it with hydrostatic pressure, just any thin amount of water from raining or leakage or overrun seeps its way underneath and it forces up the liner creating a bubble. So instead of raising the skimmer and unearthing it along with the pipe next to it, it's a big process and I don't want to get into. Beyond that, it would simply look unnatural for the water level of a pond to be above the ground around it. How often have you seen a pond in nature that looks like that with a berm? It's obviously man-made. This is obviously man-made, but it's just, it looks better this way. So what we did, you can see this pipe sticking out down there. That's the end of the system. Eventually it's going to connect to that other pipe way back there. It's going to tee out and head out into the woods, which is draining the retaining wall that spans beyond the pool. Looks pretty good, I must say, myself. So anyways, what we did, uh, that's the lowest point there, and the grade comes up around the edge, and all that it is, you have your full pond liner here, the protective felt, and here's some fabric. They use it for uh, it's not landscaping fabric. I actually had to go to a building supply store to get it. It's tougher. It's good for gravel driveways and stuff, and I redid a driveway, and we had a big roll of it. It comes in a 12-foot wide roll, and unfortunately, you have to buy the entire roll, but you could probably do it with landscape fabric. It's just very tough. The only thing I don't like is the strings that you see laying everywhere. It peels and frays, which sucks, but you just cut them off as you go and deal with it. I suppose you could burn it or tape it. We just deal with it. Anyways, you can see it tucks under here both sides. And you have a corrugated and perforated drain pipe. It just goes to, uh, it's not much further beyond that. It stops maybe about here. Uh, I left it so I can uncover it and possibly get to the end to jet the water out. Like I said, this is the highest point. There's going to be gravel on top of here. There's a little bit on the side. And that's just so you don't see, as you notice, you don't see the shape of a pipe underneath the uh, water level right here. These stones are sitting on top of one. So that stone there, just at the bottom, it's just to hide the contour and the printing. Something you learn from concealed carry. Uh, just to disguise it so you don't see a big round pipe protruding in the water. So anyways, this will be up straight. Uh, we'll put some more gravel here just to fill this up and then that will sit kind of boxy like that. Let's see the end. And it'll be just a fill. I mean, otherwise you could leave it. I just think it's a bad idea. I say get some gravel. If you don't and you have it like this, it's going to allow dirt eventually to overcome and get back here creating the same problem you had to get to begin with. And this also just allows you to have an even grade across the uh, perimeter. And meanwhile, your the level of your pipe is changing as it goes, but you don't see it. It's underground. So anyways, like I said, the grades from there all the way down to the end. I should mention we haven't done this side just because the tomatoes are there. However, this span is greater than 50% of the perimeter. So far, it's effective. 